Hi, I'm Paul from Veloworks, and it's a new wheel day for my vintage road bike. So today I'm going to be swapping my lovely DT Swiss wheels for a set of hand-built dynamo wheels that I made for myself. I'm going to hook up a dynamo system for it to find out later how I set them up and what I'm going to be using the dynamo for. For now, I'm going to take you through the wheels. I'm going to put them on the bike. Let's go. So currently on my bike, I have a set of DT Swiss PR1400 Boxic wheels. I've had them on the bike for probably three years and they're brilliant. Great wheels. They've got loads of life left in them. They've done thousands of miles. So what I want to do is I want to have a dynamo set up. So I'm going to keep these wheels, give them a little bit of a break for now. But instead, I'm going to have a nice set of hand-built dynamo wheels with a nice rim that I like, the R460, one of our most popular rims. So in the video, we'll also look at kind of some of the pros and cons about fitting a dynamo setup. Currently, PR, DT Swiss PR1400s, they weigh about 1,630 grams for the set. I know putting a dynamo system on is gonna weigh more. So let's just check what the new dynamo ones come in at. So this is the rear. The rear is built with an R460 rim DT Swiss competition hubs and a 105 Shimano 105 R7000 hub. So we've got 1.12 on that one. The front wheel is built with an R460 rim, DT Swiss competition spokes, and a Sun 28 hub, Dynamo hubs. So let's have a look at this. Set it up. So that's 1.2. So we're looking really for the wheel set to be two point, just over 2.3 kilograms. So you're looking at like 700 grams extra. So it is a bit of weight. The benefit is I'm going to have a dynamo system. Also, I probably put that weight on over Christmas, so I'm not too bothered. It is, is nice to have a lighter set of wheels. So we will see how that impacts the bike because the bike isn't the lightest bike. In this current setup without the bag and the mud guards, it's just under 10 kilograms, so it is going to push it over the 10 kilogram mark. But it is a vintage bike, and when I'm on the bike, it doesn't feel heavy or sluggish or anything. And as most of you all know, I'm not really looking to be saving weight, especially when I have things like a big saddle bag on the back. So let's go ahead and fit the new wheels. So I should add, the bike is a little bit filthy. It's probably on the borderline of me washing it. It's only because I use the bike a lot. So as I go through the process, I'll kind of give it a nice wipe. Um, but yeah, that's why it's a little bit dirty. Sorry about that. So I'm going to use the same tyres, uh, Vittoria Corsa Control. There's loads of life left in them. And I'm going to use my latex inner tubes because I like the setup of the Vittoria tyres with latex, Vittoria latex inner tubes. Just pump them, 100 PSI, because I've got a nice steel frame, so that's nice and forgiving, so I can have nice hard tyres. So I'm going to take off the rear cassette and reuse it. It's absolutely filthy, I know. I'm going out for a ride tomorrow, so I'm just going to keep it as is. The bike's probably due a full service at some point, so I'll degrease it then. Let's see how this does. There we go. Lovely. So the older wheels are off, ready for a little bit of rest, uh, maybe until the summer season. They're, as mentioned, they're the DT Swiss PR1400, and they have been on my bike for almost probably a month off three years. and. Something I'd like to say and highlight is the bearings are buttery smooth. They're the original bearings. I've never replaced them. This is a 240 hub and basically an RR511 rim um, with an optic coating on it. Now, the reason is, and if some of you watch our other videos, you'll know that I have a dislike of using hoses on bikes. And the reason these bearings are buttery smooth is because when I wash my bike, I wash it just with a garden pressure washer 
and a finish line cleaner. And that is really good on the bike. Over time, you, you know, this is when you notice if you clean your bike regularly with a hose, this is when you'll notice that bearings, water will get into the bearings. But yeah, these are buttery smooth. No need or anytime soon to replace these. So yeah, well happy. They'll go on the shelf for a bit. As mentioned, loads of life left in them. They have been on the bike through thick and thin, winters in Scotland and everything. So ideally you'd expect some wear on the bearings, but there we go. Onward and onto the new wheels. I'm going to give the bike a quick wipe. I would like to mention, if I was fitting wheels for someone else, the bike would have a proper clean. Now all the components would be nice. I'm just fitting them for me. I want to go for a ride tomorrow, so I'm not being too precious. This is very kind of, not heavily used bike, but I use it a lot. It's the winter. I'll give it a service come probably April time, because it probably is due a bit of love. But for now, I'll just give it a quick wipe so the new wheels can go on. So I'm going to put the rear wheel on first and then I'm going to jump to the front and tell you how I'm going to set the dynamo up before I put the front wheel on. Um, I'm using an R7000 hub, which I really like. They utilise a couple and cone system, so it has separate bearings in it. So unlike the 240 wheel where I can kind of just leave it alone, if the bearings are going to wear, then the wears inside the bearings, pop them out, put new ones in. These, in my experience, just need a little bit of love taken apart once a year, new grease and a clean out, which I'm happy to do because I love that process. Now, when I'm fitting these, the rim profile, so the width of the rim, is the same as the other ones. So I'm not too worried about adjusting the brakes because they'll be the, should be the same as feel as when the old wheels were on. The only thing that I do need to check because it's a different cassette is I need to check the gears because there could be a slight difference in where the cassette is placed. So I'll do that just now. So, maybe have to backtrack a little bit, probably because the other rim is worn, the brakes are rubbing, so I'll just adjust them slightly. I didn't think I'd have to, but it does make sense if the other rim's worn. And so yeah, just a slight bit. Ooh, what's that? So we got the cable just touching a little bit. So for the ends of Shimano cables, they should be 30 mil out. So that's right, but because we've got a bit of a higher spoke count, that's just rubbing. So that's sorted now. I'll just double check the brakes. Now, as it's my own bike, I'm not using a torque wrench. So, but my hand is a torque wrench, ready? Oh, there we go. Seven to eight Newton meters maybe six, but so we'll go six to eight. Right, so let's check the gears. So here, just checking the alignment. I need to leave. Yeah, just double check. So that's not too bad. Let's see what this is like. Yeah, so that's good. So I'm checking the um, limit screws without the cable being attached. I'll reattach the cable and then check if the indexing is fine. The cable had just popped out from underneath the frame. So that is good to go. Probably a, just to take a little bit off so it comes down just a little bit quicker. Maybe just one more in between there. So I'm happy with that. Again, if it was a customer's bike, with full gear service, torque wrench, tick, tick, proper torque wrench, not my arm, but it's my bike and I want to ride tomorrow. So, I sort my little teeny weeny beanie out. We've mentioned, well, I've mostly focused on the cons, obviously the weight, you know, and some of the differences in the, how the hubs are constructed and how they will need a bit more servicing. But the main aim, the main aim is for me to have a power on the front of the bike that I can use to charge or do uh, power lights. For now, I'm putting the sine wave 
revolution or sine wave i call it but i think it may be sine wave revolution it's a nice box sarah's got one on her touring bike hers is integrated into the threadless stem this is a quill stem so i don't have that luxury so the box is a really good option now it's mid-january so i do a bit of night riding i've got some nice rechargeable lights that i'm going to use for the rest of the season i'm going to think about what light i want on the front my main hurdle at the moment is this bar size is 26 mil a lot of the brackets are for 31.8 so oversized so i have to kind of use a, a combination so i want to give that a bit more thought but for now i've got an audax coming up at the end of the month and last audax i was on my gps ran out of battery i've got a really kind of old school garmin gps i really like it i don't want to go to a bigger one so i thought it'd be easier probably not but to fit a charging device and also i can charge my phone so then i've got two backups if i'm out on a journey so i'm thinking the best place to put this is going to be about there the main thing i want to do is i want to clear the headset so nothing's going to rub when i do this and also this turns so when i'm not using it it'll be in that position these are really waterproof they've got like epoxy in them and connections are like gold plated but i don't really want to have it like that with water going in if it was raining so i can put it like that so i need to leave a little bit of slack but i reckon that will be the best place for it yeah not in the way of the bell there we go so let's get on and do that what am i going to use it for mainly charging devices charging my phone keeping my phone topped up charging my gps if i'm on a longer ride they're going to be the main things I do. I have not charged lights through it, but I do have a couple of backlights. So if I needed, I reckon I could charge one of them quite easy. My front lights probably do need a plug. Um, but it just means that I have bags on my bike and I have things in them that require power. Lights, phone, um, GPS devices. So it just means I've got that on me. And as I'm doing a lot of miles, I might as well use some of that effort into charging and creating some electricity. So looks to me as though one of the best places to start routing it is down the rear gear cable. I can wind it down. I'm basically looking to get it so it goes to the fork crown and then I'll wire it down through the fork using zip ties. Ideally, if I don't have to cut too much off this, the better because then I can use it on other bikes or um, other things in the future. The problem is if I end up specifically fitting it to this bike by cutting everything, it's not gonna work very well. Uh, as you can see there, I've not left enough slack, so that'll be good to sort that out now. Let's give that a bit more, because we want it to be able to go into that position. I think I'll have it like that, so then it's nicely tucked out of the way. There we go. So I, as well as building some slack up here, what I need to do is also build some slack just around the fork crown. And the reason is, is I need to make sure that when I'm turning, turning right isn't a problem, but turning left, I need to make sure that that cable isn't going to be put under strain. So to me, that all feels fine. Yeah, maybe a little bit of slack there. I'll get a bigger uh, zip tie to put around there. I've utilised the mudguard straps as well down there. Um, but let's get the front wheel in, get it all hooked up so take a little bit of slack off the front brakes there's a bit of learning from the rear and hopefully this should slot in nicely so one thing to super be aware of and we have to inform customers of it when they buy a sun hub it's not as bad with a quick release because you do end up doing them quite tight but the hubs want to be done up to eight newton meters to the axle that goes through because the connection that part of the hub can spin so this is more prevalent on a through axle so if you if you put your bike here, uh, wheel in and you just do it up to say five or six ideally through axles want to be done up more than that so five or six newton meters um, it can spin and then kind of cause damage to the wires and stuff. So, um, yeah, really important to get that nice and tight. Also, the tighter up the Sun Hub goes, the less friction there is in it. So that, for a Dynamo Hub, so that's generating electricity. 
and there's very little friction. Other brands do have more friction. That is tasty. So other Dynamo hubs uh, come with the connections kind of ready to go. There are a few different options for this setup and how you connect them. I'm just going to use uh, two connectors, but it's a little bit fiddly. I have to do a little bit of the work myself. This cable I'm going to strip to there and then fit the connectors. So wheels are on, brakes are adjusted nicely. So the bike's ready to go for a ride tomorrow. I'll take you on a ride with me and we'll see how it all works. For now, I'm happy with the way the cable is routed. I will get another zip tie just to zip tie it there. And let's see if it works. Now with Dynamo systems, you do have to be going over a certain speed. So it's a bit difficult to mimic it here, but we'll plug this in. Speed's about, three, four miles an hour, really. The more you ride, the more it will charge. So we're looking for that bit there, and we'll see if it kicks in. There we go. There we go. So it's charging. So yeah, we're hitting the charge just there. So it takes a while to get started. And then if I was riding, like now, just go back to it. There you go. It's continually charging. So in our experience, the shutter precision hubs do about 10% an hour. So once that's rolling and it's got a little bit of charge in it, so I guess it wants to get a little bit of energy in the hub, then we should be good to go. Is that still, there we go, still charging. So we'll give it a go tomorrow and I'll see what the feel, the, the wheels feel like compared to my old ones. I'm out and about on a ride, just done about five miles, got about another five or so to go until I meet my parents for coffee, which is lovely because this is a work day and I get to go out and cycle uh, for my job and get some free coffee for my parents. So yeah, bike feels great. Uh, let me remind you of the look of the bike. So here it is with the new wheels. Very much with the shallower depth of the rims it kind of the bike's gone back to looking a little bit more classic we have the sun front hub all wired in as mentioned i will get a zip tie for up there it curls up and this is the current setup that i have so i've got my charging device and into my camel chops is my phone and you should see some images of it charging um, so it's been charging nicely uh, as we've gone along. I would say kind of trickle charging, just keeping it uh, nicely topped up. So yeah, super happy with it. I would say we've mentioned the cons. So the cons for the wheels are weight. So obviously they are heavier uh, by quite a bit because you've got the dynamo in it. This build especially has more spoke. So it wasn't a light build of wheels. I guess the other wheels were more performance related so they are semi-aerodynamic so you are going to feel benefits for that i don't know if i felt it today i'm not really looking for aero gains but definitely you're going to notice some difference these roll really quite freely so i wouldn't say i noticed much rolling resistance i have been coming downhill but the bike's been taking off greatly so nothing to worry about there with the weight it's not too much of a bother because as you can see i have a backpack i have a front bag bottles and all that so and it's just it's an old older steel bike so it's not super light so i think anyone having a dynamo setup will either want to reap the benefits over the weight so the benefits of having lights charging you know maybe they're actually carrying loads of stuff anyway because they're going on long trips or touring so fundamentally I, I i don't think the weight comes massively into it the wheels themselves feel really nice i build all my wheels with 
super tight tolerances, so 0.2 mil lateral movement and 0.5 radial. So they uh, feel just really nice as new wheels do, so super tight. The braking's much better. Even though the other wheels have a coating on them, the braking on these are much better at the moment just because they're not as worn as the other wheels. So yeah, super happy so far. I think when we get to winter or autumn 2024, I will put a light setup on and have the charger as well. For now, as mentioned earlier in the video, I'll just use my other lights. Still got some decisions to be made and don't want to rush that because it will be probably be spending about two, three hundred pounds on lights. So yeah, I'm not going to have a backlight. I like my just uh, USB ones that just charge. They last a long time. Definitely lots of pros. I think where I am with cycling at the moment, it's great to have a charging device. I know when I go on my next Audax, I'm going to be out all day, but I can just trickle charge my phone. I can trickle charge my GoPro. In experience with Sarah's setup, it, it is 10% an hour. I haven't ridden it for long enough to see if the phone will increase 10% an hour. Also, my phone is a bit naff. It's a bit old. I'm not looking to replace it, but the battery's not great. So I presume maybe in warmer weather, better phone, it might charge a little bit more. But for now, yeah, it's been charging nicely. Super happy with it, really happy. It was a Christmas present to myself. Well, Sarah got it for me, kind of, but I had to build them. Hmm. So yeah, so I'll carry on now for a coffee. Loving the dynamo wheels. Uh, there's definitely differences between going from a performance kind of focused wheel to more, I would say, like uh, like touring dynamo, like packing e wheel. The other wheels definitely had an aero advantage. I'm on a flat now and I could definitely feel the others. The bike would be a bit faster. The only thing is these wheels are nice and stiff, really nice. There's hardly any flex in them at all. It means a little bit of a harsher ride but coming down a bit of off-road or kind of gravelly path that I did then, yeah, much nicer, kind of feel like, oh, actually I could take the bike on some very light gravel now. So that's a definite benefit. Overall, with most of the things that I review, I love it. Uh, it's just because I love cycling and these wheels have been a good kind of thought about choice. So it's not a five, you know, two minute decision of putting them on the bike. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna be lovely to have these wheels and the other wheels to flick between when I fancy maybe a bit more of a performance edge. But for now, yeah, brilliant. Great to have a charging set up uh, on my bike. Another thing worth noting, I just checked my phone and the charge has gone up 2%. So that's probably in 15 minutes. So yeah, that kind of is almost on what I was saying about 10% an hour. So loving it so far. I've just finished my first test ride. I've done about 17 miles and the wheels feel great. Uh, there are some pros and there are some cons, uh, which I have covered a little bit in the video, but I'll just wrap up with the cons and pros of what I think is the differences in having this wheel set and specifically going from an aero wheel set to a dynamo wheel set. So having the kind of semi-aero wheels that I had on the PR1400s, they're definitely a little bit more forgiving. These are quite a bit more of a harder ride, so that will take a little bit of getting used to. There's definitely, you can definitely feel the other wheels, the PR1400s cut through the wind a lot easier. And so there was a benefit to that. Um, and obviously they are lighter. The pros in one is these wheels are super stiff. They're really nice. When I'm going uphill, there's no flex and they're not rubbing on the brake, which the other ones did a little bit, uh, maybe because they're a bit older as well and the spokes maybe need a bit of tensioning, but these are super stiff, really confidence inspiring. So another pro is that actually I felt really better on kind of gravelly and off-roady type paths, not full off-road, but ones you'll see in the video. Um, these worked really well. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is adjust my riding because these are so confidence inspiring. I don't wanna kind of push them too much and then fall off. And so yeah, really love the stiffness of them. They obviously charge now, so I've taken you through the setup that I have. So I've got a charging device. I've got the option to put on really nice lights later on in the year. They start charging about over 5%. Uh, they start charging over kind of five miles an hour. So I guess if you're gonna go for this, a con could be if you're doing very stop-starty rides, going up the Alps on a gravel bike or mountain bike, you're probably not gonna you know, on an off-road path, you're not going to get the charge that you want. Um, you definitely kind of want to have a continuation of riding to get enough charge. But um, it started to charge my phone brilliantly, you know, like within line about 10% an hour. So overall, I'm really happy. I think these wheels at the moment suit my riding style. They're a good all-round wheel. So they climb really well. 
uh, they ride over rough stuff. Yeah, so the bike feels more like now, like a kind of fast tourer. So yeah, really happy and I'll keep the other wheels in reserve for a rainy day. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.